Hello, everybody. Hey, welcome, everyone. Welcome to Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. Yes. We're so pumped to be here with you guys today. And we got some exciting things we're going to share with you. We're going to talk about marriage and this relationships. This is like my favorite topic, it I really think, is. to talk about. And why is that, you think? Uh, I think because I get to do it with you. I mean, it's so fun. We're talking about each other, our relationship, yeah. my best friend, yeah. the lover of my life. I yeah. mean, just... Hey, hey. But it didn't start that way. For those who are newer to yeah. our podcast... Yeah. Uh, we've been married 23 years. Yep. I say it's been the best 21 years of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, you do the math. The first two years was absolutely horrible. We were struggling. Yeah, I had a plan to divorce you, and I'm glad that that plan didn't come to pass. And I really believe that there are people out there who really have problems in their marriage, absolutely. and they do not know how to get on the same page. And we did all of the chronic stuff. I'm talking about the silent treatment. I'm talking about weaponizing sex. I'm talking <laughs> about, um, I don't know if we ever had the his money, your money, my money thing. Yeah, we, we never really got physical, you know, we didn't, we didn't do the physical, physical fighting we didn't thing. Get physical. And I think that's probably, you know, I have history with that, so it would have been done after that. Yeah. I mean, it just. But, but you also knew how not to escalate things Absolutely. and de-escalate. But we have tons of information Absolutely. that we want to share. We're talking about 23 years yeah. of marriage. And now we're best friends. We have three amazing kids. Yeah. And what we love to do, and the reason that we have this show and this podcast, is because we want to be able to help people around the world live a God-first, God-centered life. Absolutely. How are you feeling about that? I feel good about it. And you know what? People need help in their marriages because yeah. they are struggling. I mean, we talk to people um, every day, honestly, yeah. about, you know, uh, things that are going on in their marriage. And look, there is so much going in, on in the world right now. It's like the last thing I want to, to have happening is trouble in my marriage. Yeah. You know, there's trouble on the job. There's the mm -hmm. economy. If you have kids, that's a whole other issue. I want to, like, you leave in the morning, I leave in the morning. I want to, when I come back home and we get in the bed together at the end of the night, I want to look at you and be like, babe. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to be there with you and we engage with one another. Yeah. The last place I need trouble is my marriage so I just want to help people today amen and we've been there that's a horrible place to yeah be when you're out there and you're struggling and you're working and you're building business and both of us was in business and then come home and then there's warfare in the yeah. home but the good news is is that there's help mm -hmm. like you can literally have tools to change a horrible marriage into a great marriage absolutely a good marriage into a great marriage a great marriage into one that's just amazing we never arrive you yeah. know what i mean yeah. we're still we're not perfect oh yeah we're gonna talk but, about you know <laughs> yeah 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 we got some we got some stuff we have a fight or two yeah, but yeah, it's all yeah. good uh -huh. we're gonna work it out together <laughs> So we're excited about this. Of course, um, if you guys are newer to our podcast or newer to our page, of course, you can subscribe by hitting the button below. If you're on YouTube, um, uh, you, we believe that sharing is caring and caring is sharing. Please make sure that you share this with somebody. Yeah. And we love we're building a community. That's why we call it doing life with Ken and Tabitha. We're going to share with you the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, we're going to share with you our highest highs. We're going to share with you our lowest lows in the hopes that you will be able to see some things, some principles that you can extract from yeah. our high points and low points to make your life um, be what God wants it to be. And so we want you to grow closer to God and also closer to one another. And so feedback is huge. We would love for you to comment, love what you hear. If this show is good for you, make sure that you leave a review. If it's not good, don't worry about it. Just keep it moving. <laughs> yeah. And let us know what you want to hear about, you yeah. know, so we can talk about yeah. it. Well, today is exciting for me because I want to talk about, um, I want to give what I'm considering the best marriage advice that we could give. The best marriage the advice, best marriage advice, that, advice we could possibly that we could give. give. Okay. All right. And that's what I'm titling today. But I'll start with this question. What is your biggest pet peeve about me? Ooh. And 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 why well um that makes me nervous uh -huh. that's a ner that makes me nervous um i don't really say i have like a biggest pet peeve mm -hmm. um i can say the pet the the pet peeve that maybe is current you know okay. going on i don't really keep like a list of or like he, say, he does this and he does that well, yeah, you well, know that's, like that's so um what, yeah. But you could get a, a old a old pet peeve, uh -huh. or you could give one that's current. Okay, yeah, go with the current one. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, I'm well ready. I, I'm gonna say two. Can I say two? Sure. Okay. Okay. So the old pet peeve that uh -huh. is still current that <laughs> if you know us at all and have heard us talk about marriage, you know this, and it is leaving socks in the bed. Is that still a pet peeve? It's still a pet. Well, you don't know it now because I don't do it. yes. Hey. Well, no, 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 no. You don't know it because when you do it, I don't complain about it. I just learned to say, ah, oh, 
I love him. He's so cute. He and, left his socks and that's in the bed again. That, that would be your perspective. Because my perspective is that I stopped doing it. Now, I probably do it sometimes. You do. But hey, that's a principle we already dropped. <laughs> we met each other in the middle. Right. I have a part to play. You yeah. had a part well, to play. Well, you're doing the best that you can do. Uh -huh. And I realize that I can't change you. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to try to change you. But you know what I'm thinking? Like, what's the big deal about Really, leaving, what's the big deal? You know? Socks in the At bed. the end of the day. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, I'm really asking you. Like, oh, for me, uh -huh. uh, it grosses me out. <laughs> I don't like, I like my bedroom very clean. Like I take off my shoes before I go into the bedroom. Okay. Uh -huh. And I like everything very clean. And so for me to go in the bed and like be sleeping in the middle of the night, but feel this lump in the bed and it's a sock that has been on a human's foot. Not only but that. It's not just a human's foot. It's the human's foot that you. And I love your you'll, feet. Yeah, you'll How massage my feet, feet kiss feet. my feet. So what's I mean, the problem with no, my sock? No, it's more so the sock that has been like the other side of the sock that has been on the floor in the bathroom the, with you. I don't know where you wore that house. sock. Yes. I took but, my shoes but off. But dirt just, on the floor. I'm just saying, I don't. I don't like it. Okay. I'm just saying it might be extra, uh -huh. but I just don't like it. But you know what? In marriage, I found out that we all have idiosyncrasies. Absolutely. And when the scripture says dwell with them according to knowledge, mm -hmm. there is um, like a duct tape that I have to put on certain buttons that I know can just make you go crazy. Praise the Lord. And we all have different buttons. Uh -huh. Like I have certain things that you can do and I'm like, oh, I don't like that. Yeah. And maybe it doesn't affect you. And you have certain things that if I push that button, you're like, ah, ah. Mm -hmm. so when it says dwell with them according to knowledge, I got to get to know your buttons. Absolutely. And then I have to duct tape those buttons and say, I'm not going to push them. Because when our marriage was bad, I would push those buttons on purpose because I wanted you to feel. Why would you do that? Because some people in, back then mm -hmm. I was fleshy. And I was immature. And because you wasn't doing what I wanted you to do, I was going to try to do everything I could to kind of get under your skin. Mm -hmm. A little manipulation there. But you didn't. I don't know if it was manipulation or just honoring. It just, was just being just, mean. Just I mean. would call it mean. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you didn't understand back then that hurting me was ultimately hurting you. Right. And so, but we understand that now. Right. So if you want peace in the house. Yeah. You're not going to do things to push my buttons. Yeah. Actually, I want to learn your buttons and I want to stay far away from your buttons. And so I don't care anything about socks. I'm not lying. I care nothing about socks. I bought the socks. I bought the floor. It's my bed. Let's get into <laughs> it. But if you care that much about socks, I can respect you and honor you enough to take so off good. the socks before I get in the bed. Mm -hmm. And that principle transcends to so many things in life yeah you know yeah but is that the biggest pet peeve that's not bad i mean yeah that Did you, have a you know that's one? i mean the second <laughs> one kind of goes along those lines because currently we just moved into a new house a few months ago and all of that and we have this um beautiful white rug it's a cream color rug that we placed in our room mm -hmm. and i noticed that when he comes into the bathroom when you come into the bedroom you don't take off your shoes and so right now um our rug is dirty. Now, it's not dirty because of him. Yeah, let's clarify Because we've that. had like, oh my gosh, we've had construction going on in our house. And so that's the real reason. Mm -hmm. But really, his side of the rug is dirtier than my side of the I, rug. But for real, you kind of blame the whole dirtiness of the rug on me. I know I do. Uh -huh. I do. And it, I could be wrong. I'm not uh -huh. saying that I'm right. Uh -huh. I'm just saying the pet peeve is... I can is, tell how you be looking at me sometimes. The pet peeve is that when uh -huh. you come in, you don't take off your shoes. And so you're contributing to all of the... And that's, and the that's, dirt in the that's bedroom. An interesting perspective because I'm always thinking she wants me to take my shoes off. She wants me to take so my shoes off. And just... I'm doing it all the time. But just a couple of times that I don't, that's the time. I'm there. <laughs> I know. So your perspective is like, I never do it. And my perspective is like, I'm at least it's nine so for funny. 10. I totally understand, babe, though. Uh -huh. And that's why, but I don't say anything about it. I know that it bothers me, but it's uh -huh. not worth saying something about. Uh -huh. Like, um, Ken, you are very careful with what you watch on TV. Like if there's somebody naked on TV, he's not watching it, okay? Mm -hmm. So I was in the bedroom last night and I was watching, I don't know, a Christmas movie. I was watching something on TV and the whole movie was just, PG. The whole movie was amazing. He comes in right on a part where um, this guy just is trying to like get with this lady. He strips down naked and says, let's go jump into the ocean and go swimming. Well, they didn't show the front part, but they showed his back part. So his behind is like all on the screen. Here comes Ken through the door. What are you watching? What are you watching? And I'm just like, oh, I knew you would come in right at the wrong moment. What does the scripture say about your eyes? <laughs>
I don't know what it says, but I know it says something. And I'm sitting there watching a naked man on TV, and uh -huh. here he comes. I'm just like, babe, it's not what you think. Uh -huh. But yeah, I feel like it, Ooh. you know, when it comes to you taking your shoes off, I do notice. But here's the principle. Marriage has a lot to do with perspective. Absolutely. And maturity says, yeah, I see it this way, but can I try to see it that right. way? Right, right. And that applies to shoes coming off, socks in the bed, what you're watching on TV. Absolutely. I see it over here. And the gospel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, is the gospel from the perspective of Matthew, mm -hmm. the gospel from the perspective of Luke. Absolutely. And that's why it's so amazing because it's these three different um, perspectives that's all saying the same thing from a little different angle. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think it's important for us to know that in our marriage that yeah. you don't see what I see and I don't see what you see. Absolutely. But when we love each other, we'll do the work to try to see what other what the other person sees. Absolutely. And I think too, as you age, uh -huh. you know, from your twenties to thirties to forties and, and beyond, uh -huh. I think that the more I age, the more I come to realize like, okay, you are not all that. Yeah. You don't know everything. Yeah. You know, like your way is not the right. only way. Your not way is not the best way. Right. And so the more I kind of like mature, I think I come to understand like, girl, shut up about the socks. Yeah. You know, let the man, he's a grown man, let him come into his bed. Like I actually sit, have these conversations yeah. with myself. Yeah. It's perspective. I understand that you have a perspective as well. And here's the perspective. It's not that big a deal. It really is. You know, people are getting divorced over what they call unreconcilable differences. And yeah. it's really, they're sweating the small stuff. Absolutely. And it's so hard to be in the in the house with what the scripture says is a nagging woman. Mm -hmm. And I could flip it around. Maybe there's a nagging man. Mm -hmm. The principle is, is that you just sweat the small stuff. Yeah. And it's those little foxes that spoil the vine. And sometimes you just got to be okay, which is like, I don't care. Absolutely. We just living together and we just hanging out. You do things differently and it's just not a big deal. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let me ask you this. Yeah. What is the one thing about me that you would like to change if you could? Ooh. That's I'm ready. I don't know if I have something that I would change about you. Like, honestly, yeah. what would I change about you? You preaching and you ain't even preaching. I mean, seriously, I have not, I, I don't think, I don't have those thoughts in my prayer time. If I'm praying for you, my prayer is to not God change him, but God help me to understand mm -hmm. the man that you created. Wow. Help me understand his past, how he grew up, yeah. um, what he experiences in his day to manifest the words that he says, mm -hmm. the emotions that he has. God help me to understand him. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have anything that I would change about you. you. You know what I love about that answer is that it's so authentic. Yeah. And it's so real and it's so raw because we didn't 100. we didn't go over this information mm -hmm. before we mm -hmm. we went on um, live on online. And um, to hear you say that and I'm looking in your eyes and knowing that you're truthfully do not have anything about me that you would change. I have a lot about myself that I would like to change. Absolutely. But I'll, here's the principle mm -hmm. is that many times we want to change our spouse into being us. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of fights is breaking out, because mm -hmm. truthfully, most people want to make their spouse them mm -hmm. for example many times when i get frustrated with you it's like because you're late okay yeah and i'm on time and or i think that my kind of time is the best kind of time mm -hmm. but you've never not gotten on stage on time you've never not been prepared to preach a message everything that you do you still get it done you just don't do it like i would do it yep. There is a temptation for me to change you to want to be me. Like I would leave the house in a certain way without being driving a certain speed, but that's how I would do it. <laughs> it's not necessarily how you would do it. I mean, the list goes on. Right. And for you to say there's nothing that you would want to change about me is really a principle that can help so many people mm -hmm. because so many people have so many things about their spouse they want to change. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, God, change me to be able to handle my spouse. Right. They want to change somebody else. And this is what we've learned is that you can never change another human being. Mm. Only God can change that person. Don't you wish you could sometimes though? That would be good in many instances, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but and I'm thinking more. That's about, why we're not God. Um, faithfulness anyway. and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. And, and all of us need to change because yeah. change equals growth. Yeah. But change comes from within mm -hmm. that person. Mm -hmm. It has to be my decision, mm -hmm. my desire that I am going to change. And that's when it takes place. It's not because yeah. somebody's pushing me, yeah. manipulating me, coercing mm -hmm. me, being mean to me and wanting me to change. I was just listening to a podcast or something online the other day. 
day and the guy was talking about how he's such a timely person mm -hmm. and his wife was never on time and it used to just aggravate him. I mm -hmm. mean, he would mess up the whole night. The whole dinner would be gone because she was late. But he didn't realize that his wife is also one of the most spontaneous, um, spontaneous, spontaneous person, people that he knows. And so he just loves her spontaneity. Uh -huh. Is that how you, you say it? it? That's yeah. a hall. Spontaneity. Okay. He just loved that about her. And like, if you took that away, and I'm thinking about you, uh -huh. like you're that fun loving person, yeah. you're that um, let's let's just do it kind of person. And if I take that away to make you more like me, well then I'm actually taking away that which I actually love myself. Mm -hmm. I love that part of you. So if I strip that part down of you, I've actually changed you into something that I don't even love. Right. So with your spontaneity and with your creativity also comes a different time schedule than mine. And mm -hmm. I have to accept that. Yep. And there's so much stuff about each other we have to accept. Yeah. And guess what? We said all of that to get to the best marriage advice. Oh, yeah. That we oh, could yeah. Give. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I want to hear from you, though. Okay. If you had to give one piece of marriage advice. Okay, so let's say there's somebody who's watching and they're struggling in their marriage. Let's say their marriage is good, um, but it's not great. Let's say that you're just staying together and you feel like you're just becoming roommates. Uh, maybe the romance is gone. The sex is not good. The, the intimacy is not there. There's a communication problem. Yep. Wherever yep. you are in your marriage. Um, I don't know what your advice would be, but I would love to hear it. If you were talking to someone and mm -hmm. we're at Starbucks and you're yep. like somebody's saying, hey, what's the best marriage advice that you could give me? I know mm -hmm. that you have a lot of advice that you could give, but if you had to pin it down to like one thing, what would it be? Mm -hmm. um, I think my, my best marriage advice would be to, um, to trust God more than you trust your spouse mm -hmm. or to... Mm, kind of let God be God in your life mm -hmm. and not your spouse. Let's unpack that first so, part, mm -hmm. to trust God mm -hmm. more than you trust your spouse. What do you mean yes. by that? What I mean is that there were a lot of times and sometimes I can find myself leaning toward you know doing this even now after 23 years, but particularly, especially earlier in marriage, I would go to you mm -hmm. for a lot of things mm -hmm. before I went to God. Okay. And I think it put an ungodly strain on you and pressure on you to uh -huh. be the provider, uh -huh. whether it was like for finances. I'm trusting you mm -hmm. that, okay, we're, we're going to have our bills paid. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm not, you know, mm -hmm. participating in the whole thing, but I'm really trusting in you that mm -hmm. you're not going to let us go bankrupt, that you're going to make sure that we have a home to live in. And why was that? Why do you think that um, was? Yeah, I think it's because it, it was because... I don't know. I just allowed you to take the place of God in my life in that area. Well, I don't even know at first you had a relationship. With yeah, God. Uh, yeah, I probably so didn't. When we first Not at started first. dating. You wasn't mm -hmm. even saved yet, mm -hmm. and so then when we started dating, you got saved. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. as we started dating. So I was a believer, but right. I really didn't know the word. So or early on in marriage, especially those first two years, like you talked about, those first two years that were terrible, um, I was growing in my faith. You were growing in your faith as well. You were saved, but you didn't know the word of God. Right. Um, and so we were both on this journey. So in the on my way to figuring all of that out, mm -hmm. um, what I learned is that like, yeah, I loved God and, you know, um, all of this stuff had a relationship with God, but it was only to a point. Mm -hmm. But my relationship with you, I would say, was stronger than my relationship with God. Oh, wow. So what what did you do to change it? Mm -hmm. Or better yet, why would you say that that would be the best marriage advice you would give? Um, because just after being married for 23 years, there's yeah. a natural dependency. There's a natural, I think, inclination for the woman to kind of you know, cling to her husband. Mm -hmm. And um, whether it's having babies, whether it's finances, whether it's, you know, that safety and protection, which is, you know, in most marriages, that man, it is his, res not responsibility, but it's one of the roles that the man plays to cover and to protect. Mm -hmm. And that's great, mm -hmm. but it's not to replace God in our lives. Okay. And so um, what I found myself doing was, you know, whether it was finances, whether it was um, um, my happiness, mm -hmm. my peace, my joy. And so I went through, I was depressed when we first got married. Mm -hmm. Married, And so I found myself going to Ken to make me happy, mm -hmm. going to my husband mm -hmm. to make me feel at peace. Mm -hmm. And so I was coming to you for these emotional things that you just don't have the capacity to give me. Yeah. Um, and what I found is oh, that wow. 
we when we got married, it was like, yay, yay, I love Ken and he's my everything. And, you know, and I treated you like that. But there came a point in marriage, maybe after a couple of months, mm -hmm. where Ken's capacity ran out. Yeah. And now I'm coming to you for that same peace and that same happiness, mm -hmm. that same level of love, mm -hmm. that same safety and protection. But you're tapped out. I couldn't get it from you anymore. Yeah. So now I'm left and I feel like I'm in a marriage where he doesn't love me and he doesn't take care of me and he doesn't make me happy and he doesn't do all these things for me. Well, really, you could never do that in the first place. I was going to you in like I should have been going to God. Wow. So what I learned to do is just kind of turn my perspective again, mm -hmm. put my faith in God and his word and say, okay, God, I'm feeling a little sad right now. Let me go to you and cast my cares to you. Mm -hmm. You can't even carry my cares like that. You right. know what I mean? Like I cast my cares to Jesus. Yeah. And so I don't know. I still do that today. Uh -huh. Like I might find sometimes, or maybe I've had a hard day at work and I just want to come and just blah, everything on you. And we do talk about hard days. We do. But not from the perspective that I'm God. Absolutely. And that I can kind of be your provider, or your, your healer and Absolutely. all those things. I can play my part, the, but I'm not God. Right. Mm -hmm. But there are some times mm -hmm. where I can even remember a time recently mm -hmm. um, in the last few months where I came, you came home mm -hmm. and I just kind of was like the kids this and the kids that, and this is going on. And I just kind of like gave it to you mm -hmm. and you kind of came back to me and you said something about like tab i feel like you're really just projecting a lot on me mm -hmm. and what i did in that moment was i gave it to you before i gave it to god yeah and so i still after 23 years of marriage again like mm -hmm. i i stay on and this that was just balance a couple weeks ago actually. yes it was just a couple that. of weeks ago yeah. yeah it was like i had a really hard day mm -hmm. and i came home and you obviously had a really hard day uh -huh. but you didn't even say hey sweetheart how was your day yeah. or hey we got some food over here or hey um it was just like i came in the door your son this your daughter this we did this we and I, oh Oh, hold on now. I mean, it was like so much responsibility. Yeah. And I really feel like, especially guys, and maybe this will be part of our mm -hmm. podcast later on, we need to teach people how to handle responsibility. Absolutely. Because there's so many people that the weight of responsibility, they feel like they want to leave their marriage just because they just want to be by themselves. Right. And they're not ready for the responsibility. And we there's a grace for the responsibility. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But that's rich, what mm -hmm. you just said. So uh, if I was to take out just a tagline from what you said, it's basically don't make your spouse your God. Absolutely. Because only God can be God. Yes. And once you make God, God, God will help you with your spouse. God first. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, well, for me, if I had to give the best marriage advice that I could possibly give to someone, it would be probably to love God more than you love your spouse. Mm. And those two, what we just said, are very similar. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. And so for me, it's mm -hmm. to love God more than you love your spouse. So for us, um, our marriage was headed for divorce. I had a plan to divorce my wife. I had actually told my dad, hey, dad, brace yourself because I'm going to divorce her. And I remember he gave me the best piece of advice ever. And that's why I love him to this day. <laughs> he is amazing. Um, he says, well, why do you want to divorce her? And I said, well, she don't do this. She don't do that. You know how you do. You come up with all these things. And my dad gave me a prophetic word. He said, so? And that's all that he said. <laughs> and the so was so stern. It was almost like, I've been married for 40 years, bro. And you're talking about she don't do this, she don't, so what? And that's a word for somebody who's watching this today. And you got this laundry list of things that your spouse doesn't do. I wanna say to you, like my dad said to me, so? That's just part of marriage. <laughs> there is a grace to be married and you have to tap into that grace. Absolutely. And when he said, so I'm telling you, that thing stuck in my heart. And I said, I knew that I was wrong. Right. I knew it. He didn't have to say anything else. He didn't give me a sentence. <laughs> he gave me <laughs> one two letter word. The man said, so. And I'm like, oh man, I need to get myself together. And thankfully, my parents are a product of great marriage. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I guess, I don't know, maybe 45 years by now they've been married. Yeah. And so I've seen it. I just didn't know how to live it out. But nonetheless, when we first got married, we had so many problems. Um, I was always looking for the grass to be greener on mm -hmm. the other side. And what I, when I look back, what I realized is that I didn't love God like I should love God, so it was impossible for me to love his daughter. Mm. And so the grace, greatest marriage advice I could give, like I believe in family meetings, I believe in the sandwich method of the positive and the negative and the positive, I believe yeah. in the distribution of labor, I believe in all these principles that we're gonna share with people over the years. Mm -hmm. 
But if I had to get you to the foundation, it's be like, you got to fall in love with Jesus. Yeah. Because if you fall in love with Jesus, you'll understand how to honor your spouse. You'll understand how to submit to your spouse. You'll understand generosity. You'll understand what it means to die to self. You'll understand what it means to come and apologize, even if you feel like you wasn't completely wrong. And you'll do all of that as unto the Lord. And so I love my wife, not because I love her. I mean, she's lovely and she's beautiful and she's intelligent, but I love her really because I first loved God. Mm -hmm. And so my extension of love towards her is because of my first love for him. So good. And my extension of submission towards you and honor towards you is because I first honored God and I first submit to God. And I think we need to get back to the basics Absolutely. because marriage is God's idea. It really is. And to try to do marriage without God at all is crazy. It's crazy. And I think, you know, sometimes we get into, into marriage mm -hmm. and we forget the covenant mm -hmm. that we made with God. Mm -hmm. And we look so much at the man and the woman, the spouse, you know, our spouse and at each other. And you can want to give up. Like you said, I had a plan to divorce my wife. Mm -hmm. Well, you could be like, you know, well, I had a, a plan to divorce her, but really it was a plan to break the covenant. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a covenant that we made to each look, other. And it would have been the worst thing we've ever done in our Absolutely. life. Absolutely. And it looked like the most easiest thing to do back then. Come on, somebody. It looks like it's the easiest thing for you to do yep. to go to the courthouse, to get your papers or do whatever you do to get a divorce and then get online on eHarmony or somewhere and try to find yourself somebody go else. Start a new and life. Come eat, pray, with their love. Own bondage. They're going to come with their own baggage. They're going to come with their own past. Yep. And there is no yep. easy way out. So you might as well fix it's what not. you got. Absolutely. You might as well fix what you Yeah. Mean. And so there, there's a covenant that we made, not between each other as man and woman, but between man, woman, and God. Yes. So when we break, you're, you're saying like lo loving God, I'm saying put God above your husband. Yeah. I'm, you're saying love God, you know, be at, you know, before uh, more than you love your wife. Yeah. And the, the, cl the, this is like a three way mm -hmm. relationship, you uh -huh. know, kind of like it's between husband, wife, and God. Yeah. And so it just makes so much sense that, you know, we just. Are... And I want to give a scripture to go along with mine uh -huh. because I, I know somebody will be like, well, how do I do that? How do I love God more than I love my spouse? Mm. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm. If you love me, meaning that our love for God is contingent upon how we live. It's not just based upon what we say mm -hmm. or we sing songs. Oh, God, I love you. He right. says, don't say it, show it. And after you show it, then you can say it. Mm. If you love me, keep my commandments, not just the Ten Commandments, but everything that God's told us to do in the word, right. what the right. Holy Spirit's told us to do, every principle. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I really believe that if we can get out of the place where we are just lukewarm and we can just say, I'm going to have radical obedience mm -hmm. and obey God and love him that way. He will help us wow. love our spouse that way. So that's what happened for us. Okay. This was about 21 years ago. I decided to fall crazy in love with Jesus. I decided to spend an hour or so in the Bible every day. I decided to put aside some of my secular music and secular movies so I could spend more time building up my spirit. Yes. Man. I decided to renew my mind with the word of God. I decided to die to self mm. so that um, the greater one who is Jesus could live on the inside of me. I decided not to be an unfaithful man um, walking around trying to cheat on you and do all kinds of things. I decided that I'm going to love my wife like Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. I read the Bible and yeah. I said, as hard as it is, I believe he's right and I'm wrong. And I'm going to obey his commandments, which is a form of love for God. And it completely transformed our relationship. Mm. <laughs> it transformed our finances. It transformed my business life. It transformed everything that we're involved in because I didn't play around for years. Absolutely. I was a Christian atheist. I believed in God, but I lived like he didn't exist. And that is not the way that you want to live. Mm -hmm. And now I am who I am because of that foundation of love. That and it's foundation. not mm -hmm. I'm not a perfect man, mm -hmm. but I am a progressing man. And a man that says, you know what? I want to be more like Jesus every single day of my yeah. life. And I think if we have that foundation, everything else will kind of fall into it, place. It, like when we're together and sinking, mm -hmm. yeah. everything is good. Yeah. But even like now, yeah. after years of marriage, if we're not like, if, you know, if we're not like synced together yeah. and like, you know, like we're kind of like, you know, not spending time together, not having family meetings mm -hmm. and like our life is off. Our kids are off, mm -hmm. like our work, like everything we do is off. Mm -hmm. And so we know at that point, okay, no, it's time for a date night. Okay. Yeah. We might need to take a little vacay because we need to get it together so yeah. our life can thrive. So our advice to you would be get in a good church, man, get in a spirit filled Bible believing Absolutely. church. Absolutely. Get some great community around you. People who have great marriages, reduce the amount of toxicity in your life people who aren't going anywhere, people who are just speaking over your life that in a negative way, 
Um, start to spend time with God every day, time with the Bible, time in the presence of God, time in prayer. Open up your heart and be teachable and humble and say, God, I need you. Mm -hmm. And If that bears witness with you, I would love to pray with you right where you are, because accepting Jesus into your life, you don't have to be a perfect person to be a forgiven one, but you do have to surrender. And so wherever you are, you don't even have to bow your head. I don't know. You might be driving or something. You can just repeat the word, these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart today. Forgive me of my sins. From this day forward, I give you me. From this day forward, I am saved. If you prayed that prayer from your heart, we believe that you got born again. We would love to hear about your salvation story. If this has been a blessing to you, make sure that you comment right now. Subscribe right now. Share this um, share this podcast and show with somebody that you believe that it can be a blessing to. We believe that caring is sharing and sharing is caring. If you want to do life with Ken and Tabitha, there's so many different ways you can do that, of course, here on YouTube. But we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and also TikTok where she will be dancing. Ah. <laughs> and that will be funny to see. Hey, we love you guys. Until the next time, we have a show that drops every Tuesday and Thursday here. Thank you for doing life with Ken and Tabitha. We'll see you next time. Peace.